Grey Album is a remix. It is new media created from old media. It was made using these three techniques. Copy, transform, and combine. That's how you remix. You take existing songs, you chop them up, you transform the pieces, you combine them back together again. You've got a new song, but that new song is clearly comprised of old songs. But I think these aren't just the components of remixing. I think these are the basic elements of all creativity. I think everything is a remix, and I think this is a better way to conceive of creativity. Uh, in terms of Lost, uh, you know, what the hell is that island? You know, um, it's usually followed by, uh, you know, seriously, what the hell is that island? Why so many mysteries? What is it about mystery that, that uh, I seem to be drawn to? And I, I was thinking about this, what to talk about at TED, when I talked to the, uh, the kind rep from Ted, and I said, listen, you know, what, do, what should I talk about? Uh, he said, don't worry about it, just, just be profound. We bring stories to the public. The stories can be anything, and some of them are actually true, but they all have one thing in common. They all need to look like something. They all need a place. Why? To give you a first impression of what you were about to get into. When they slip war and hatred under your door and offer you handouts on street corners of cynicism and defeat, you tell them that they really ought to be your mother. Kids now live in a world which is digitized and the time for them is everywhere. How many people here in the last week have procrastinated more than you wish you would? How many people have exercised in the last week less than you wish you would? Have eaten more than you wish you would? Have had more unprotected sex than you wish you would? <laughs> when there are hundreds of different styles of jeans available, and you buy one that is disappointing, and you ask, why, who's responsible? It is equally clear that the answer to the question is you. You could have done better with a thousand, with a hundred different kinds of genes on display. There is no excuse for failure. Even the hardcore in the green movement used washing machine. Why does good sex so often fade, even for couples who continue to love each other as much as ever? Why does good intimacy not guarantee good sex come to lead to popular beliefs? Isn't it always true? Heart is what drives us and determines our fate. That is what I need for my characters in my books. A passionate heart. I need mavericks, dissidents, adventurers, outsiders and rebels who ask questions, bend the rules and take risks. People like all of you in this room. Nice people with common sense do not make interesting characters. They only make good former spouses. I have been very lucky that my disability has not been a serious handicap. Indeed, it has probably given me more time than most people to pursue the quest for knowledge. Positive, a nice little story about the Skeptics is a, a, a non-profit educational organization. We're always looking for little good things that people do. In England, there's a, a, a pop singer, very one of the top popular singers in England today, Katie Malua, and she wrote a beautiful song. It was in the top five uh, for 19, in 2005 uh, called uh, Nine Million Bicycles in Beijing. It's, it's a love story. She's sort of the Nora Jones of, of the UK about how much she loves her guy and compared to nine million bicycles and so forth. And she has this one passage here. We are 12 billion light years from the edge That's a guess No one can ever say it's true But I know that I will always be with you Well, that's nice. Um, at least you got it close. In America, it would be we are 6,000 light years from the edge. Uh, <laughs> But my friend Simon Singh, the uh, particle physicist now turned science educator, and he wrote the book The Big Bang and so on, uses every chance he gets to promote good science. And so he wrote an op-ed piece in The Guardian about Katie's song in which he said, well, 
Um, we know exactly how, how old the, how far from the edge, you know, it's 12, it's 13.7 billion light years. And it's not a guess. We know within a precise error bars there how close it is. And so we can say, although not absolutely true, that it's pretty close to being true. And, uh, to his credit, Katie called him up after this op-ed piece came out and said, I'm so embarrassed. I was a member of the astronomy club and I should have known better. And she recut the song. So I will end with the new version. We are 13.7 billion light years from the edge of the observable universe. That's a good estimate with well-defined error bars. And with the available information, I predict that I will always be 